All right, so we were talking about lesson 6.6, .6, performing transformations on the coordinate plane. And I told you I was gonna show you a quick shortcut here at the beginning of this second video. I'm gonna do that right now. And then we're gonna do two more examples. We're going to do a fourth example, so second and third examples with a center still at zero, zero. The fourth example though, we're gonna use a center of dilation at some other point, makes it just a little bit harder because we're gonna have to stick with the counting method. So let's talk real quick about that shortcut. So remember this example we just did, we transformed triangle ABC with a scale factor of two, and we started with these points and we did all the counting. I want you to look real quick. What happens if I take all these numbers and multiply them by K? One, three times two gives me two, six. Four, four times two gives me eight, eight. Two, six times two gives me four, 12. So as long as the center of dilation is at zero, zero, you can just take your original X and Y values, multiply them by K, and you'll get your new X, Y values. Nice and easy, don't have to do a bunch of counting. All right, so let's take a look at that with example number two. So example number two, we are going to transform triangle PQR with a scale factor of one half. And then, a little extra here, we're gonna reflect the new triangle across the x-axis. So kind of a review of what we learned in a prior chapter, reflections, rotations, and translations. I'm just gonna do a reflection on this one. All right, so go ahead and graph that triangle PQR. So get that graphed on your paper if you need to. All right, so negative four, two, negative two, six, and one, four. Then we're gonna use our shortcut to come up with our coordinates for our new point, so we're gonna graph it, we're gonna to check to make sure it makes sense. All right, so pause the video if you need to, get that graph, and then come back and get ready to go. All right, or if you wanna just do all the problem on your own and then check your work, go ahead and do that as well. All right, so you should have paused the video and at least gotten that graph, so let's take a look. That should look like this. Okay, P is over left four and up two, negative four, two. All right, Q, left two and up six, negative two, six. And R, right one and up four, positive one, positive four. Okay, so let's do the multiplying thing. So remember, what am I gonna call this new point from P? I'm gonna call it P prime. So I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna multiply negative four times one half. Well, negative times positive is a negative. Four times one half is two. 2 times 1 half is 1. So P prime should be at negative 2, 1. Q, so we'll call this Q prime. Negative 2 times positive 1 half is a negative 1, and 6 times 1 half is 3. And R prime, 1 times 1 half. Well, it's not too hard to do, it's just 1 half. 4 times 1 half is 2. All right, let's graph. So P prime, going to negative 2, 1. So negative 2, left 2 up one, I call it P prime. Q prime was negative one, three, negative one, one, two, three, right here. And I'm gonna go ahead and call that Q prime. And R prime, one half, so only move one half of a unit, it was positive, so I'm going to the right, and then up two, right there. And we're gonna call that R prime. I'm gonna get out my ruler, I'm gonna connect this triangle, I'm gonna see if it makes sense. So P prime, R prime, should look parallel to this, right? Looks pretty good. That should look parallel to the original PQ. Looks pretty good. And Q prime, R prime should look parallel to my original QR. Looks pretty good. Should look smaller because K was one half. It was between zero and one. Definitely looks smaller. I'm gonna connect my vertices. Right, I, last time I just kind of showed you I lined them up. This time I'm actually going to connect them and see if the, all the dotted lines meet at my center of dilation, which was zero, zero. So here we go. A couple dotted lines here. So there's my first one. Okay, that one went to zero, zero, so that's good. All right, my next one. Okay, that also went to zero, zero, so that's good. And my final one. And that went to zero, zero. So it looks pretty good. Remember, our center of dilation almost acts like a flashlight, shining out, hitting this thing and projecting it farther. Now, in this case, we're actually reversing it, so we're working back kind of toward the flashlight instead, but the idea is the same. All right, that's example number two. Let's look at the, oh, wait, wait, hold on. We aren't done. Remember what this said? Reflect the new triangle across the x-axis. Oh, can't forget, gotta finish our work. Okay, so which one's the x-axis? This one, right? 
So now I need to reflect this across this. Well, it's one unit above right now, so all I need to do is move one unit below. I don't move left and right at all if I'm, if I'm reflecting across the x-axis. Right? So I come down here. I'm going to call that P double prime. Okay, remember, if this is like, you know, Joe, whoever, um, come up with some last name, common name, Joe Smith, and this is Joe Smith Jr., then this is Joe Smith the third, all right? The first, the second, and third, okay? Same idea, okay? All right, Q prime is three spaces above, so I need to, can't move left and right at all, so I'm going to move three spaces below. I'm going to call that Q double prime. R, remember, was at one half, and then we went up two spaces, so I'm going to go one half, and I'm going to come down two spaces, and that's R double prime. Let's connect that. Now, I'm not going to have parallel anymore because of the reflection, but I should still have similar. This should look congruent to my second triangle and similar to my original one. So, it should look like I took this and I flipped it right over. Looks pretty good. Angle Q double prime matches up with angle Q. P double prime matches up with angle P and so on. I can't connect these vertices and have them lead back here because of the reflection, so I don't have to worry about that. Well, let's go over here and write those coordinates down. So P double prime, if you look at your graph, I was left two and down one. So that's negative two, negative one. Q prime was left one and down three. Q double prime left one and down three, so negative three. And then R double prime was right one half. That didn't change, that's still positive one half, but it went down two instead of up two. So when we reflect in the x-axis, you'll notice all the x numbers stay the same. We didn't move left or right at all, but we did. Everything that was above went below the axis. If we had something below the axis, it would have moved above. So that changes all of the y value signs. All right? Okay, let's move on to number three. We're going to transform quadrilateral WXYZ. Let's use my reach with the shadow there. I've got to grab my other graph. All right, transform tra uh, quadrilateral WXYZ with a scale factor of 7 over 2. So go ahead, get these four points copied down on your paper. Graph them real quick. If you want to do the transformation really fast, go ahead and do it. Now I'm going to give you a quick warning. Make sure you got plenty of room on your graph paper for this one because when we do a scale factor as big as 7 over 2, that's like 3 and a half, right? Okay, it's going to get pretty big, so make sure you leave plenty of room on your graph paper for this one. Don't try to squeeze it into some tiny little section of your graph paper. All right, pause the video if you need to. Go ahead and do the whole problem if you want to, or if you're still a little bit confused, just come back and watch me do it. All right? Okay, here we go. This is what your graph should look like. Okay, take a look. Make sure yours looks like that. The only reason I have these numbers off to the side is so that I know which one's which as I grab my papers. All right, so don't worry about those too much. All right, now we're going to do a scale factor 7 halves. So remember our shortcut says I can just multiply. So W prime equals. So I'm going to take a negative times a positive. It's going to give me a negative. 2 times 7 over 2. Well, this is 2 over 1. So 2 over 1 times 7 over 2. The 2's cancel off, if you want to think of it that way. So 2 over 1 times 7 over 2. It's really a negative 2. The 2's cancel off. So I get negative 7. Or if you want to think about it this way, that's fine. Just multiply straight across, get negative 14 over 2. Well, that reduces to negative 7. So either way, I'm going to get negative 7. Well, I'm doing negative 2 again, so that's going to give me the same exact answer. Negative 7. X prime. Going to give me another negative 7. Okay, what about 4? Positive 4 times 7 over 2. You can do a little reducing. You can multiply straight across. Either way, 4 times 7 over 2 is going to give me 14. Okay, Y prime. 1 times 7 over 2, that's pretty easy, it's 7 over 2. 3 times 7 over 2 is going to give me 21 over 2. Now that's a little bit hard to graph, so I'm going to rewrite that as mixed numbers if you want to. 7 over 2 is 3 and a half, and 21 over 2 is 10 and a half. Try to sneak that underneath here, hopefully you can see that all right. It says 3 and a half and 10 and a half. Sorry, kind of running out of room here. Okay, 3 and 1 half, 10 and 1 half. Okay, z prime, 3, well, we just did that, so it was 21 over 2. And 0 times 7 halves is 0, so I'm going to rewrite that again, 10 and 1 half, comma, 0. All right, so let's graph those points now. 
So w prime is negative 7, negative 7. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. I'm going to double check that just to make sure I didn't make a mistake. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. We're looking good here at w prime. x prime is negative 7, 14. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Okay, now i got to go up 14 from there. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Way up here. I'm going to put a dot, but I'm going to double check that one more time just to make sure I didn't make a mistake. 4, 5, 6, 7, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Looks like I got it in the right spot. We're going to call that X prime. Okay, next one. we got 3 and 1 half, comma, 10 and 1 half. So let's do that. 1, 2, 3, and 1 half. Now, I'm going to keep right in the middle here as I move up. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and 1 half. I'm going to put a dot there, and again, I'm going to double check it. 1, 2, 3, and a half. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and 1 half. Looks like it's in the right spot, and call it y prime. Last one. 10 and 1 half, comma, 0. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and 1 half. Double check that. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and 1 half. Comma 0 means I don't go up or down at all. Z prime connect. So Z prime connected all the way over to W prime. Nice long segment. It should be 3 and 1 half times as long as my original WZ. Z prime to Y prime should be three and a half times as long as my original ZY segment, and so on as I finish off here. Now, XW is vertical, straight up and down to begin with, so this one also should be vertical. Remember, parallel. So it is, that's good. All right, and I'm gonna zoom out so we can see all this at the same time. And there we go. So you can see how we have similar shapes once again, if I connected the vertices, y prime to y, it should lead straight to 0, 0. I'm not going to show you that. All right, I'm not going to take time to do it. z prime to z, that makes sense. It runs right along the axis. It would definitely run through 0, 0. w prime to w would lead to 0, 0. And x prime to x would lead to 0, 0 as well. All right, last example. Example number four, we are going to transform JKL with a scale factor of three. We're going to use two negative two as the center of the dilation. It's going to be a little bit different. We cannot just multiply. You cannot take two one times three and get six three. That would work if the center of the dilation was zero zero. Since it's not, we cannot do it. All right. So this one, we're going to have to go back to that first method we did, the counting method. So graph those three points and graph the center of dilation as just a separate point, but don't connect it to the other ones. So go ahead and do that real quick. Pause the video if you need to, and come back. If you want to try the counting on your own, that's fine. If you just want to watch me do it and follow along, I'm okay with that as well. All right, you should pause the video, gotten that graphed, got our center of dilation graphed as well, and it should look like this. So we are told to use a scale factor of three. So what we're going to do is we're going to do our counting again. So from here, Point J is one, two, three units straight up. Okay, there's no left and right movement at all. So I need to go three times as far. So left and right still don't need to move anywhere. It was zero. Zero times three is zero. Up three is going to have to become up nine. Now, it doesn't mean I'm going to go up nine from this. It means I go up nine from my original. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And I call that J prime. Now that's not the point, 2, 9. I went up 9 from here. So that's really two spaces to get me back to the axis. Seven more would finish off the 9. So this is the point, 2, 7. I'm going to write that down real quick over here. J prime equals 2, 7. Okay, let's do K. 0, 4, but I'm not just going to take 3 times 0, 4 and get 0, 12 because I'm starting here. So how do I get to K? I go left 2. And up one, two, three, four, five, six. I have to triple everything because that's my scale factor, three. So left two is going to become left six. 
up six is gonna become up 18, way up here off my paper. Well, not way off my paper, off the screen for right now. All right, so make sure once again, you hopefully you left lots of room for this one. If not, you might wanna start over a little bit. Okay, so left two, up six. We're gonna go left six and up 18. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. I'm going to put a little dot, but I'm going to recheck that to make sure I didn't make a mistake as I counted. So left 2 up 6, left 6 up 18. Remember, I'm tripling everything. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. I did get it in the right spot, and that is K prime. Last one, L. Left, one, two, three, four, up one. So scale factor three, I gotta multiply everything by three. So left four becomes left 12. Up one becomes up three. So go back to here. Remember, don't start here. Always come back to here. Left 12, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, and up one, two, and three. I'm gonna double check that real quick again. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 1, 2, 3, we're good, that's L prime. Now let's get those points. So I'm gonna do L prime first just because I'm already here. So remember I went left 12, well I was already over here two, so that's two spaces. 10 more should put me at negative 10. And then obviously I'm up one, so negative 10, positive one for L prime. Okay, let's do K prime. Remember I started here, and instead of going left two and up six, I went left six and up 18. So left six, one, two, three, four, five, six, that takes me out to negative four. Up 18, well, two of those spaces get me to the axis, so it should take 16 more to get all the way to my point. So negative four comma 16. If you aren't sure on that, just count them up and you should be able to figure it out for sure. Okay, let's draw that triangle and we're almost done. So I'm connecting K prime down to L prime. Should look parallel to my original KL. Looks pretty good. We could do slope again if we really wanted to check that. The way I'm gonna check this one is I'm gonna draw my dotted lines. And if my dotted lines all lead back to the center of dilation, then I know I did it right. Okay, so let's take a quick look. Does that look pretty similar? You zoom out just a tiny bit. I always get it backwards. I figure this camera out one of these days. All right. They look similar, okay? Looks about three times as long for every side, so this is looking pretty good. I'm gonna draw my dotted lines, see if they lead back to the center of my dilation where we planned on it from the very beginning. Okay, this one's looking good. It's leading right back to the center of that dilation. Okay, let's do this one, K prime all the way through K. Okay, I've got it connected there and lined up there. And coming back, and sure enough, it looks like it went right through my center of dilation there. That's really good. And now we're going to connect L prime with L. And excellent, it came right back to my center of dilation as well. All right, we're looking pretty good. That is it for lesson 6.6. .6. Hopefully, you watched both videos, took good notes. Ask me questions in class if you have any, and we'll see you guys later.